These are the three shoes that I've been using to train for my first marathon. Starting out with the daily trainer, the Adidas Adi Zero SL. SL stands for super light. These are my favorite daily trainers. I have six pairs of these now because you can get them heavily discounted. They retail about $120, but I was able to get each pair from anywhere from $40 to $70. I can wear them for a wide range of purposes as well as distances. So short runs, fast runs, long runs, slow runs, the shoe can really do it all. It won't be the best performing shoe for each of those, but it can do them all, which is super important to me in a daily trainer. To give you a quick overview of the shoe, starting out with the outsole, typically Adidas has continental rubber outsoles, but this one doesn't. Um, now I will say that it has been aging gracefully. I've put about 200 miles collectively on two different pairs of these. So this one has about 80 to 90 miles and the outsole looks pretty much brand new. Um, it is a little bit on the dirty side, but it's because I've been putting in so many miles on it. But I will say that the rubber that's on it is still very tacky and grippy. Um, so I do feel like I won't slip during runs, uh, especially during if there's a light rain or if it's a little bit wet outside. Um, and I will say that the outsole looks like it'll last another at least two to 300 miles. Moving on to the midsole, this is a full length light strike midsole with a little hockey puck of light strike pro in the forefoot. Um, now I will say that this shoe is definitely on the firmer side, which is also what I've seen in other online running shoe reviews. In my opinion, that's a pro and a con because it's not gonna feel as comfortable on the foot. However, I do love the stability that the stiffer or firmer feel provides, especially on the last couple miles of a long run, you know, a long run over 10 miles for me specifically. I don't like my feet to sink into a shoe too much and I don't like it to be too soft because it feels a little bit unstable at times as well as a little bit sluggish. I can appreciate the firmness from this trainer because on those later miles, it's still a pretty firm shoe. I mean, I feel like I have a good ground feel as well as a, a nice push off in this shoe. Moving on to the upper, which is also one of my favorite parts. This shoe fits true to size and it is very plush and comfortable on the upper. It's nothing special, nothing fancy. It's just an engineered mesh, but sometimes honestly, I prefer a super simple engineered mesh because they don't overdo it. The fit is usually pretty good and the, the upper is not gonna cause too many problems. Oftentimes I feel like when brands try to do too much on the upper, it starts to have all these weird problems. Like for example, on the Adi Zero Adios Pro 3s, super expensive shoe a lot of people love that shoe i couldn't wear them because of the back heel tab not having enough padding um, there were only achilles pads or things that surrounded the achilles and it caused a lot of irritation and a lot of rubbing which actually made my heels bleed so I, I prefer sometimes really super simple, um, nothing crazy. I don't mind that, you know, it might weigh a couple extra ounces. I definitely think it's worth the trade off, but honestly, the upper has been holding up really well, true to size and nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Moving on to my long run slash recovery shoe. This is the New Balance Fresh Foam More V4. Honestly, I think New Balance needs a little bit of work on their names. Uh, they're super long, but I do really like this shoe and I'll tell you why. Um, I think that it's a very plush and comfortable shoe and I do like that there's additional foam in the forefoot due to the four millimeter heel drop, uh, but we'll get into that when I talk a little bit about the midsole. But overall, I've just been using these for super casual long runs as well as easy pace efforts. Uh, when you do try to pick up the pace in this shoe, it does feel a little bit sluggish and a little bit, I guess, clunky, um, but it is a very comfortable shoe and it's the reason why it's my go-to for long runs and recovery runs. The upper is kind of the same as the Adi Zero SLs and you're, you'll got, you guys will kind of see that trend where I do like a lot of basic uppers. It's, it's also an engineered mesh. Um, it doesn't do anything too crazy. There's a little bit of a heel tab right here, but I had really good heel lockdown and really no problems with the sizing at all. I think these run true to size. Um, to me, as long as the upper, I guess I don't notice the upper too much, like it's not super comfortable or not super thick or luscious or whatnot, um, and it's not super thin and uncomfortable, then that's like an A plus in my book because I feel like the upper should just be an extension of your foot um, and shouldn't do too much. Moving on to the midsole, you have a full length fresh foam midsole. 
This is one of the first New Balances, honestly, that I've ran in in a while since maybe I was like growing up. Um, but Fresh Foam is a pretty nice and soft foam. I will say that it does feel a little bit airy um, and it feels like you get a lot of compression, which is nice, which is why it's good for those long and easy runs. Um, however, when you do tend to pick up the pace, I do feel my foot sinking in a little bit. Um, also to speak on durability of the foam, I'm not too sure how long this foam will last. Typically with softer foams, they will start to bottom out or they won't compress as much um, the longer you wear them, but I've worn mine for about 30 to 40 miles so far and they've been holding up fine for the, for the midsole. The outsole is this kind of interesting traction pattern. They do have the more durable rubbers covering most of the outsole, which is a good idea. Um, I Like I said, I put 30 to 40 miles in this shoe and it is a little bit of a softer rubber compound, the black pods that are on the bottom. Um, and I did notice that after 30 to 40 miles, it's not super bad or it's, it doesn't affect the performance too much, but I do see that some of the patterns on the black traction rubber pods are starting to wear off. Um, I wouldn't find this too concerning because it still has a lot of life left in the shoe. However, I will say that it is a little bit different from a lot of the other shoes that I run in typically. Um, usually the first 30 or 40 miles, I don't see any signs of wear. So maybe that's something to note on the Fresh Foam V4, but I do believe that that softer rubber compound on the bottom is also what's making this shoe feel so soft. Typically when you have a really tough and rugged outsole, um, it's gonna firm up even the midsole because when you're stepping in on it, um, it's just not gonna be as soft as if you have softer um, traction pods on the bottom. So it's kind of a pro and a con, but I will say that this has been an excellent shoe for recovery days and long run. This shoe retails for about 150, but you can honestly find them on sale for cheaper. I got mine from Amazon for about 90 bucks. And last but not least, honestly, I have been sleeping on this shoe, um, or not this shoe, but I've been sleeping on this brand my whole life. Was never really a fan of their shoes, but thanks to Kofuzi and Believe in the Run, these are the Puma Deviate Nitro 2s, and I plan on running my first marathon in them, as well as just doing any tempo or faster effort runs. This shoe retails for about $160. I did find them at my local Puma outlet for $90, which I thought was a great deal. But starting out with the traction pattern or the outsole, we have a full length Puma grip outsole. Um, honestly, I have no complaints. The grip is really nice. I think I've heard a lot of people love Puma grip and I can see why. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Adidas Continental outsoles if I were to kind of compare rubber traction patterns, but seems like it's a very durable traction pattern as well as it provides very good grip and stability while running. So no complaints on the outsole. Moving on to the midsole, this is where it gets exciting. Uh, we have the Nitro Elite Foam that's kind of full length, but as you can see on the color part of the midsole, that's gonna be where the Nitro Elite Foam is. So a little bit less in the heel, and then it gets gradually bigger as it gets to the forefoot. And then there's gonna be a carbon plate or some type of carbon composite plate that's I think called the power plate. Some type of carbon composite plate in between the white midsole as well as the Nitro Elite Foam, which is the colored midsole. The six millimeter heel drop helps me land on my midfoot slash forefoot a little bit better, which I personally do enjoy. And I will say that the ride is a little bit firmer. Um, it's very nice in step in comfort, but once you start to actually run in the shoe, you can definitely feel the rigidity of that carbon composite plate, as well as the Nitro Elite Foam tends to firm up a little bit, which is good, which is what you want in a tempo slash race day shoe. Um, so I personally really enjoyed the foam on this. Last but not least, the upper of the Puma DV8 Nitro 2. Honestly, their name also needs a little bit of work. Uh, we have an engineered mesh with a little bit of power tape on it. I'm not exactly sure what the power tape does. I'm assuming it's a little bit for more support on the upper. But honestly, I didn't really notice the upper too much, which in my opinion is a good sign. Um, I will say that the lockdown, the heel lockdown was very good in the shoe. I didn't even have to do a runner's knot. And the one thing I will note about the sizing is that it did feel a little bit narrow for my foot. I do have a little bit of a wider foot, but typically a size 12 in most brands will be wide enough for my foot. I will say that the Puma DV8 Nitro 2's toe box was a little bit more narrow. Um, but as you kind of run in the shoe, it kind of loosens up. However, I will say that just the platform itself with the midsole and the outsole doesn't feel as wide as some of the other shoes that I've mentioned. But you know, in a race day shoe, typically shoes are a little bit skinnier, even though technically this is more of a super trainer and not a race day shoe. And there we have it. Those are my three shoes that I've been using to train for my very first marathon. I do have some shoe, other shoes that I kind of run in um, and I'll throw into you know some runs here and there, but those are the three main shoes that I've been really enjoying this season. Um, so 
Hopefully marathon training goes very well. A little reminder, you don't need three shoes to train for a marathon. I am just like a sneaker enthusiast, so I love to try different sneakers, um, but you really only need one. And if I were to choose one out of these three shoes to train in, um, also and also race in, I would choose the Adidas Adi Zero Super Lights. Um, these are just like my do it all trainers. So if you were to pick one shoe, I would just make sure that you really love that shoe and um, it can kind of do a wide range of things. like. You wouldn't maybe want a super soft shoe to do all of you know your your training in because you might need something that could pick up the pace a little bit. So that would be my biggest piece of advice. But you don't need three shoes to train for a marathon or run a marathon. You just need one. Um, but yeah, hope you guys found this video a little bit informative, a little bit of entertaining, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.